By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an alpha and beta match that was played in Forthausen at the Dwarven Warriors. So this is a match that I found on my hard disk and I'm just very excited to show it to you. We haven't had alpha beta in a long time on the channel. So I'm looking forward to show you another match. Um, and this time we're going to look at Anna, who's playing with a white and black, dominantly white and black deck. There are some other colors in there. Uh, it's a red deck and he's taking on D and D is just playing with this stunning white, blue and red deck. Again, a little bit of a black splash in there as well. No green cards, I believe. Both players are not playing with any green cards. That's too bad for green today. So if you're a lover of green, I'm sorry. The cards are not in these decks. Now, before I jump into the deck deck, I would just like to share with you that um, if you want to skip the deck deck section and if you want to skip this intro, there's a very simple way to do that. You can simply check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the games themselves. And also, if you want to know more about the rule set, um, you can also check out the description below. There I've put all the information of the rules um, uh, there that you might might want to have and I'll also add some links to the Dwarven Warriors event in Vorthuis if you're wondering what that is all about. Okay, so that is what I wanted to share with you here in the um, introduction of this video. We're now going to continue with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of the player on the left. That is Anna. Let's take a look at his Reds deck. And here we see the deck of Anna. Now, yeah, there's one card that really sticks out here and maybe we should discuss that card first and that's of course Plague Rats. Now Plague Rats is this card where the four of rule obviously doesn't apply in this rule set. You can play with as many as you want and Anna clearly wants to take advantage of this. So Plague Rats is a creature for one black and two with summon rats with power equal to the amount of rats that you have in play. So if you have two rats in play, they're both 2-2. Two, two. If you have three, they're 3-3. Three, three, and so forth. Now, as you can see, there are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15 rats here in the deck of Anna. So that means that if they're all 15 on the board, which is highly unlikely, but still, it is possible, then you've got 15, 15, 15 plague rats. Now, that would be a sight to behold. Um, besides these cards, this is, of course, the core of his deck. He's got some very good supporting cards in this deck as well. We're seeing all the power. We're also seeing a lot of restricted cards. And I, I, I earlier said there are no green cards in this episode. It's not true, because look at what the Anna is doing. He's put a little regrowth in there. I didn't see that one before. So he's basically putting just all the restricted cards in here, all the power cards, everything that he can do to make his play cards as powerful as they can be. And um, he's chosen to combine the Plague Rats with that white control package, right? Swords to Plowshares, Disenchants. Those cards are, of course, really good to kind of control the board and to make sure that, for example, if your opponent goes faster than you with better creatures, you can kind of control that scenario by using your Swords to Plowshares or, or a well-timed balance. And at the same time, if your opponent doesn't rely on creatures but relies on artifacts and enchantments instead, you can negate that as well with your disenchants. So there are a lot of tools here that he has uh, in his in his Plague Rats toolbox, as to uh, to call it that. He's also playing with a little bit of red, as we can see. There's a disintegrate splash in here, and there are quite a lot of red mana. And then I kind of want to go to the sideboard, because the sideboard is very interesting. He's got a transformational sideboard, so he's kind of expecting his opponent to focus on the Plague Rat plan after game one. But look at what he can do in game two. He can just board in a whole different sweep of creatures into his deck without changing, well, not too much. All he does is take the Plague Rats out and just take his other creatures in that are actually really, really good. I mean, Sangir Vampire, Hypnotic Spectre, Juggernaut, Setch Troll, such an in incredibly annoying creature, um, a creature that D is playing with as well. So that... You know, those are some of his weapons. So I'm really curious to see in game two if he's actually going to swap and when he would consider swapping the creatures or if it is something that he always does after game one. It's quite interesting. Um, talking about interesting things, I really love, love that single Nightmare in this deck. I think Nightmare is such a beautiful creature. One black and five to cast for a flying Nightmare that has power and toughness equal to the amount of swamps that you control. Now remember, a dual land 
has this unique ability that it, it is both lands. It's a dual land, right? So it's a forest and it's a, a swamp in the case of the bayou, right? In the case of the Badlands, it's a mountain and it's a swamp. So if you're looking at the power and toughness of Nightmare, all these dual lands that have black in them actually tick up to increase their power toughness of Nightmare. Okay, so this is the deck of Ana. It looks very beautiful, very interesting. Now let's take a look at what D is bringing to the table. And here we see the deck of D. Now I guess this is what happens when you're just putting all the best cards together, right? This is just, it's so powerful of the core set, of course, of Alpha Beta. Uh, we're seeing the full power nine. We're seeing a lot of the restricted cards in this deck as well. I'm also liking those two JM Day Tomes at the right top corner because they go great with all the Moxin, right? Because you have the Moxin, you're probably gonna have a lot of mana very early in the game. You can use those mana to draw cards with the Gem Day Tome, and you wanna draw cards because you're probably gonna run out of cards in hand because you're ramping up so quickly with all the Moxin. So it all makes sense, it all comes together. Talking about that, to draw seven spells are gonna be awesome in this deck as well. Wheel of Fortune, Time Twister, also Brain Geyser is gonna be great here. Now I just wanna focus for a moment on the creatures on the left side, because um, looking at the creature base, I can tell D wants to play kind of aggressively, right? We see four Savannah Lions, which is great in this format. Rem remember, no Mishra's Factories, no Curd Apes. So, I mean, those Lions are having a field day, so they can start attacking straight on, right? Then we also have Setch Troll, which is one uh, red and two for 2-2 two -two that gets a plus one, plus one bonus when there's a Swamp in play, so it becomes a 3-3, three -three, and you can regenerate for one Swamp. So very powerful creature. Very aggressive as well. Great stats for the for the casting cost. So you've got a 3-3 three, three for 3. So when you start attacking with those two creatures, you can have your opponent's life total go down very, very quickly. And then uh, D is combining that with a lot of direct damage. I mean, look at that. We've got four bolts, four side blasts. That is a lot of direct damage power. And what I'm liking about this strategy, I, I so understand that he's chosen not to put in uh, sword to plowshares because D wants to deal a lot of damage quickly and you don't want to give life to your opponent. With the swords you can give life to your opponent but with dire damage you can and destroy your, your the creatures of your opponent if need be but also if your opponent is low enough you can just start slinging those dire damage spells at your opponent's life total instead. So I get it D. I think it's a very powerful deck. I am hoping uh, that Ana can live long enough so that you can cast your Shiva Dragon because that's my personal favorite in this deck. Um, I'm actually not saying that Ana cannot win because remember, Ana's deck was insanely strong as well. So we've got a really good, cool clash between two fully powered decks that chose the best cards for their strategy. I'm just really looking forward to this matchup. You know what? Let's, let's go. Let's go to the match and see who's going to win this one. Game number one, here we go. D starting off very well, as it seems. A Mox Jet and a Plateau passing on to Ana and ooh, Ancestral Recall. He's doing this, I believe, in the turn of D. He just passed turn and then drawing three cards. And let's see, what can D do here? Okay, there is a Setch Troll and a pass. So Setchtroll is a 3-3 because we've got swamps in the house with that uh, scrubland. There's a disenchant on the Mox Jet and he has to discard the Bayou. Just having a little bit too many cards after that Ancestral uh, Recall. And there's an attack for three. Another Setchtroll. What a great start for D and problems already here for Ana. He really needs to find some of his swords to plowshares to take care of this uh, troll infestation. Instead, he finds a uh, Plague Rats which is great, of course, and it could form a, a big problem for D later on the line, but maybe we won't have a later on the line, because look at this, Ana's life total dropping to 11. There is a bolt on the Plague Rats and a Black Lotus. Ancestral Recall, this is insane. I guess D wants to win this game just really, really quickly. Do you have somewhere to go, D? Let's see what he can do. So two blue mana still floating, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, now this is a format without mana burn. That's why we don't seem to take two points of burn here from the unused blue mana. There is a Swords here on at least one of the Setch Trolls. So this is going to stop the bleeding a little bit. So one of the Setches will leave the game. That does mean three more life for D here, going up to 23. And there we see a Regrowth, probably on the Ancestral. He's got that Underground Sea open. Yeah, exactly. Ancestral Regrowth. Drawing three more, and there's a pass. 
There's an attack, so Ana's gonna drop to eight already. It's gonna be really tough for Ana to... Oh no, mind twist. Oh, things are just keep getting worse for Ana here. He's gonna lose three cards to the twist. And, oh no, not Nightmare, that's too bad. Nightmare is so beautiful. Anyway, it's actually not the worst mind twist for Ana because he, I think, a land and disenchant. There we see a Swords on the Sedge and another Plague Rats here for Ana. So I guess Ana kind of managed to get rid of the Sedge Trolls, which is good. He's still on 8. He's still in this. And there's a new Sedge Troll. Great. That's just great news for Ana. And it's so difficult to deal with these Sedge Trolls because they do have regeneration. There's another Plague Rats. So hopefully for Ana he can find another one and then his Plague Rats will become a 3-3 three, uh, three, three creatures. There's of course the attack and you know Ana not double blocking because of that regeneration ability of the Sedge Troll. And there's a Sarah Angel. This is a big problem. Look at the life total of Ana. He's on 5. Okay, there is a Chaos Orb. He's going to flip the orb on the angel, of course. And, yep, he's going to hit it. Okay, that's something. Sarah Angel's gone. Demonic Tutor is probably going to tutor for swords for the troll. Yeah, this is a really good turn from Anna. Look at him go. Taking care of Sarah Angel, taking care of Set Troll, and dealing four damage with the Plague Rats. Great turn for Anna. The big problem for him now is his hand is completely empty. No cards in hand. There we see uh, Savannah lines on the side of D. And it looks like this is just going to be a pass turn for Anna. Yeah, just a pass turn here. Let's see what D can do. Two cards in hand. Tapping. Oh, Demonic Tutor. Interesting. What is he going to look up? I'm hoping, because, I mean, Ancestral Recall no longer an option. Demonic, uh, sorry, Mind Twist no longer an option. Both in the yard, right? He's got six mana. So D, if you want to go for style points, Sheevan Dragon. Look up Sheevan Dragon. That would be really cool. I think, though, when I'm looking at his list, he doesn't have, like, a Fireball or an Expel, or else he would have probably looked that up, because Ana's on five. But I think looking at his list, probably Brain Geyser to draw some more cards. Although... He doesn't have double blue. He only has a single blue with the Mox Sapphire. Interesting. In that case, I kind of don't know what he's going to look up. I, I hope she even dragon. I mean, you know, Ana has played three swords to plowshares already. So the chance that he has that, that fourth swords in hand to deal, he's already played Chaos Orb. So, I mean, she even could kind of be a nice, nice way to win this one. He can cast it right now. Three cards in hand. No, he's just passing turn. Interesting. So maybe he did look up the Brain Geyser, but cannot play it out. Now he's got the Tundra, so he's got the mana to do it. And yep, there it is. There's the Brain Geyser. And now he's going to draw five cards. I think this is the nail in the coffin, right? Remember, D is playing with tons of direct damage. Four bolts, four side blasts. On this on five. I mean, he needs a miracle here. And, you know, that is not a miracle. That is just a scrub land. Is D going to finish here with like, I don't know, double... Yeah, okay, double bolt, double bolt. I kind of felt it coming. I was feeling like double bolt. Maybe I thought Cyblast and bolt. Anyway, this was game number one. Very, very entertaining to watch. Both players are now going to go into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. And I believe D took a mulligan, by the way. So he's starting with six cards in hand. Oh, look at that opener by Anna. Oh, man. Ancestral Recall right away from the get-go. We see a lot of Ancestral Recalls, by the way. Are, are, are you guys really only playing with one Ancestral Recall? I mean, I wonder. Look at this! It's insane! Of course, why not? You know, open with three Mox and a Tundra into a Setch Troll, whatever. Oh, man. Nice thing to note here is the Setch Troll, though, is still a 2-2 because there's no Swamp in play. And, and look at the Graveyard of Honor. <laughs> Ancestral Recall and Time Walk could be worse. He's taking an extra turn, but it looks like he hasn't found any lands. Well, then what do you do? You tutor for a land. Of course, why not? Oh, man, this is hysterical. Both players having an absolutely broken start, and uh, that's what I love about uh, old school magic. These broken plays, it's really part of the game. There's an attack. 
And I believe he should only take 2 damage, right? Because it's a 2-2 still. There's an Armageddon! Oh, which is great for D because of all the Moxen! What a good play here! Insane! I'm feeling for Anna who has, you know, despite Ancestral Recall and Time Walk, he's so far behind. I mean, and that kind of tells you a lot about the power of these deck here. There we see a Disenchant on the Mox, so just one Bayou open has to discard a Disenchant. There's another attack gonna drop to 11. What can he do here? Underground C. Going through his graveyard. Thinking, tapping, untapping, and just passing turn. I mean, it's looking bad here for Ana. Another attack, gonna drop to eight. And there's Savannah Lions. Man, I mean, this is like in the back for D, right? It's just what a crazy game. I mean, if you start with Ancestral Recall and Time Walk, you don't expect to be in this spot. On 8 life with only 2 lands, staring down at his Havana lines and his set stroll on the other side of the board. And D hasn't played a single direct damage spell yet, you know, in his deck with 4 bolts and, and, and 4 side blasts. Insane. At least Ana needs a white source. You know, maybe cast a swords or something. It looks like he doesn't have it in hand though. And okay, there's a soul ring. And there's a regrowth. Ah, the only is the one card flow. I mean, yeah, okay, so he goes for the mana, bat lance, and passes turn. I mean he's got with a little bit of luck, he can squeeze out one more turn, right? He's gonna drop you three. No bolt, please. Okay, so he's got one more turn. Come on, Anna, you can do it. Sangir Vampire, okay, at least that's a cool creature. Black Lotus. Second the Lotus, Setstroll. Okay, I'm liking this. End step. Yeah, double swords. So he's gonna gain seven more life. He's actually gonna go up to ten, right? So he's gonna go up to ten, then take five, gonna go back to five. And a pass. So he's he's basically back to where he was before that whole shenanigans with the double creature. I mean, I guess he he gone up a little bit in life. But he's going to be dead anyway next turn, so he's, he's got to find another way out of this. At least play one blocker. Another Sengir would be great. And okay, there we see seen not Spectre. So what we're seeing right now is he's, he's boarded in his sideboard of creatures, right? That's what he's done. So there's an attack again. So it looks like he's just going to block the lion. At least then they trade creatures, which is something. He's going to go to two. I mean, that one extra point of damage, it doesn't matter. Whether you're on three or on two, it doesn't matter much against this deck. There is another set stroll. I mean, this game really shows how good set trolls are. They're just so difficult to deal with, even if you have a deck with Swords to Plowshares. There's a Send Your Vampire. It's not going to be enough, though. There's a pass, so it looks like it's going to be a 2-0 for D. The good news here is that they did play a third game. So yeah, victory here. Whoop, whoop. So D winning this, but like I said, Stick around because we're now going to game number three. And that game, oh man, that's exciting. Game number three. Now, D has already won this matchup because it is a best of three, but both players decided to play a game three. Why not? And uh, I'm actually really looking forward to this. I'm just kind of hoping to see on this deck, you know, work. It was already working, I guess, but it's, D's deck was working better, right? So anyway, I'm starting with the Tundra. There we see a Volcanic Island by D in a pass. And there is a Batlands in a pass. So both players have been quite slow starts if you compare that, especially D if you compare that with the earlier games. Both players are playing with all the Moxen, right? So they can have very explosive starts. There we see Hypnotic Spectre, Hardcast, turn three. 
And I'm really expecting a bolt here from uh, from D, but maybe he doesn't have it, and that means really good news for Anna. I mean, remember, it is instant speed, though, so maybe he's just waiting for the final, final moment. Oh, no, he's not. Okay, playing a set troll, so I guess that means he doesn't have a bolt or a side blast to deal with the hippie. So hippie's going to attack, and that means D's going to lose a card here. Wow. Mind twist. Okay, that is a great one to take out, and twisting D as well. What a brutal moment, taking out a mind twist with your hypnotic specter and then twisting as well. That is brutal. Man, look at that. D losing some of his cards there. Some lands and stuff. Not too important. But still, and hand is now empty of D. He is able to cast another set troll. But things are kind of looking okayish here. There's an essential recall kit. They're looking great now for Anna. Tapping three, disintegrate. Okay, that is really good. And I guess, wow, and a swords, because I guess those often, uh, sorry, set trolls are still tutus because there's no swamp on the side here of D. So there was the attack. There was the time walk by D. Mock Sapphire. So things are really looking up here for Anna. Untapping Hypnotic Spectre. There is a Jam Day Tome and also a time walk. So much firepower on both of these decks. There is a Cetral, another attack and a pass. Unfortunately for Ani, he's just missing that one land for a Jadam Tome activation. Would make it even better. But things are really looking bad for D here. He really needs at least a creature. Just a big creature to block or a creature, you know, or just something to remove one of the two creatures. Okay, Cetral, that's something. He can use the Cetral to block the Cetral. Ana here finding more cards with his Jam Day Tome. There's an attack with the Flyer, of course, so that means he's going to drop to 7. There's a Sengir Vampire. An untap on the side of D. Ancestral Recall, okay, that's actually a pretty good card in this scenario. But he's finding more lands, that's not so good. I mean, he needs like Sarah Angel at least to block the Sengir. Or even better, his one Sheevan Dragon, that would be really great. Armageddon? Interesting choice. Interesting choice. I mean, at least it makes the set stroll a bit smaller. Gonna go to one. There's a disenchant. I mean, D still has that Black Lotus, of course. And, yep, that's it. So he's using the Lotus for white mana to cast the Swords to Plowshares, but he's unable to take care of that Flying Hippie. And that Hippie was just the MVP of this match, right? It did so much work for Ana here. So Ana, man, I'm happy to see you at least take one of the games here. So that means it's 1-2. So you've won the game, but D, you have won the match. Congratulations. And that is the match for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. It helps a lot. And also, if you like the format, let me know in the comments below. Because, you know, if you want more alpha beta, let me know in the comments. And I'll have a look if I can find some more matches for you. I personally find these always breathtaking to watch. These collections are just insane. It's so beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful cards. Um, really jealous at these collections as well. Um, another thing you can do, by the way, to help the channel out, besides leaving a like and leaving a comment, is sharing this content on your social. So if you like what you see, share it with your friends. That's really, really appreciated. And uh, maybe you're new to the channel. If you are welcome, happy to see that you found Timmy Talks, please consider subscribing and hit that bell. Thank you very much. And then there's one last thing that you can do, and that is you can become a sponsor of the show. And how does that work? It's really simple. There's an information card popping up right now in the right top corner, and that links to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. So if you click on there, it will take you to the Patreon page, and there you can become a patron of the channel. And that already starts with $1 a month. And so you can support Timmy Talks financially. The cool thing is, if you do, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You get uh, your name mentioned in the end scroll, and you can participate in all the Timmy Talks events. So every now and then, I organize things like online tournaments, like little 
uh, uh, quizzes and stuff like that to thank the channel members and patrons for their support. And of course, when you're a patron or a channel member, you can be a part of that. So please consider becoming a patron on the Timmy Talks Patreon page. It's really, really appreciated. Um, talking about all that, let's go to the end scroll and take a look at the amazing, wonderful, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.